Okay, continuing work finally on this after waiting a week for hoses. So I got this uh, all together here now. Got, uh, got everything run to the valve block and that's uh, basically um, still running the, uh, the, the swing cylinder there. I've got the other ports capped off which will be for the twist wrist. So everything worked out pretty good with my hose lengths. Uh, I'm gonna be a little tight with the body work there. It'll be rubbing on that, but that's okay. Um, less than ideal, but anyway, it'll work. Uh, so I still gotta run the uh, hoses from there, down, around, up, and, and uh, to here. So I've got those hanging over there, but uh, the uh, more important thing here, I'm kinda testing my, my travel. I was getting my hose lengths here for this thing, and I am hitting here, and I'm not quite at full stroke yet, which sucks. So I'll have to redesign that a little, but uh, we'll get it. Uh, this sand, yeah, I think that's going to be okay. As I said, I'm working on getting my hose lengths here. I asked him not to crimp the ends on the one, but I guess he didn't get that note because I need a cutter about there. So, um, oh, and I decided for the thumb here. There's my cylinder strapped more or less in place. I'm gonna actually, uh, instead of running a quick connect and then have uh, hose whips on the cylinder here that I would connect in here and then swap those over to the quick connects on that thing, I think what I'm gonna do is just plumb in T's here and run that directly, T's with a valve. Somebody's mowing the line. So uh, I'm going to do that, and then when I want to use a twist wrist, I don't have to disconnect anything here. I'll, uh, I'll just flip the valves closed there, and that'll isolate the, uh, the thumb cylinder. And then I don't have hoses dangling everywhere, which will be better, I think. Make things cleaner. I think I'm going to go for it. So I've got a couple valves on order, and i got some T's that I'll have to cut and weld into that tubing there but that's where we're at now um, I'm gonna try and get these hose lengths here and what do I got a uh, quarter to four yeah I think I can make it back in there and at least drop the hoses off for, uh, for the hydraulic shop to cut and recrimp there so I think that's all gonna work okay okay got a couple more hours in after work here today Got a little bit more done, made a little bit more of a mess after the, uh, I think my last clip here, I remembered, oh yeah, I got a PRV I got to throw in here uh, on the thumb circuit so I don't break anything. So that involved getting a few more hoses and figuring out a return line to the tank. And I found something way down there that has a, a plug in the end of that, uh, that return line there. Uh, so that should be fairly simple, we're hoping, to tap into, but uh, that's, of course, draining the whole tank. So I've got to uh, make that probably a two-man job so, uh, so that I don't drain my entire tank while I'm trying to fit fittings on there. So I've got to clean this up a little bit, but that's more or less how she's going to work. And uh, what else here? Oh, yeah, so over at this end... As I mentioned, I wanted to uh, tee in a couple of valves there for the thumb, uh, to isolate the thumb so that I don't have to swap back and forth. And I managed to pull those off, chop them apart, and weld a couple T's in them, and even got some paint on them. So uh, tomorrow I'll be able to throw those back in. So, uh, making good progress. I got my hoses here now. Uh, that's for the tilt cylinder. And those connect up to the other end of those pipes over there. And what else? Oh yeah, I picked up a pressure gauge here so that I can test for uh, pressures. Set my relief pressure. And to do that, I put a couple T's in here with uh, with ports there so that I can um, tap in pre and post uh, uh, PRV here, pressure reducing valve, and uh, adjust as necessary. So that's it for today, I do believe. 
Yeah, I think I'm going home. I'm starting to get hungry. Time to uh, call her a night. Check in later. All right, so I finally got the last of the hoses, got everything hooked up. What moves that? The pedal moves it. And everything works. I even got the ho hoses hooked up the right direction the first time. That is awesome. Very excited about that. Now I wish I could go dig with it, but uh, we're building the thumb for it right now. So trying to get that done. I got a little bit of a, a clearance issue. Right in here. That hits, so I gotta uh, do a little bit of clearancing there, but that's not a big deal. We can clean that up a bit and uh, get the last bit of rotation out of that. So, excellent, I like that. All the hoses clear, that length's good. So what I gotta do yet is uh, set my relief pressure. This is more for the thumb, but uh, um, yeah, the swivel works perfect. And uh, I had to make a little fitting down there to go into that plug, but uh, it all worked out good, welded that up. So that's it for now. All right, we got a thumb built there. It even works. Everything clears. That good capacity there. Good reach. What I haven't done yet is uh, set my hydraulic relief pressures, but this is what I came up with. So those are the valves up there that will uh, isolate the flow so that I can use the twist wrist, which used to be around here. Oh yeah, there it is. So it is right there. And for regular use, I got the thumb. Awesome. Very happy with how that turned out. I gotta add in a little more uh, gusseting here. I wanna add some gussets between the teeth or else these are just gonna fold over. Those are fairly long there. But uh, I got everything to work. Took a couple attempts, but uh, I made it work. Uh, I gotta make some pins here yet. Uh, permanent pins. These are just obviously temporary for the time being for testing purposes. Oh, and I got a little more welding to do up there. And a little grinding down here, but uh, more or less, I got this sucker working. Very happy to see it working fine. So, all right, back to work. All right, welcome back to the project. The twist wrist is all done. I've had this thing complete for a while, used it on a couple of jobs. Man, everything on this works great. I'm really, really happy with uh, with how everything functions and how it all turned out. So, um, the twist wrist works flawlessly it's it's perfect uh, uh all the dimensions uh everything worked out really good uh grading beam is incredible uh if you haven't used one get your hands on one to try it it's so fast uh so easy to uh, to use and does a does a really quick effective job it's a real time saver um unless you're my competition then don't get one of these so the only thing i would change up with the design of this here is uh, I think I'm going to chop these uh, these front extensions down a little bit, maybe in half. I think the uh, the idea with the, these is that the the length is supposed to help stabilize and and uh, help you keep the grade uh, real good because it's so long. But they end up being I think a little bit too long and tend to snag on stuff if you're not careful. A little bit more hanging out there and you're never carrying material out that far with something only what is that four inches tall i think these four inch i-beams here so i might do that yet i'm going to use it on uh, on another job that we have coming up shortly and i'll know a little bit better uh after that job but really really short learning curve on that thing it works really well uh then the thumb over here that's all done too I really like how this turned out. Used it a bunch, and it's it's very effective. Uh, different design than what I'm used to. In that, uh, I did the uh, the tube across with the tines out for it. What that does is it keeps this section uh, really narrow, so it's not obscuring visibility when you're not using it, which I really like. I actually notice a, a big difference between 
that and say my 200 which is kind of like full width all the way out there um, so I really like that design uh, hydraulics here as I mentioned I went with the valves um, so when I wanted to use uh, the twist wrist I uh, put the thumb in the fully upright position and close off the valves that locks it in place it stays put and then all the hydraulic flow is going through the quick couplers to the uh, to the twist wrist works really well saves a bunch of juggling uh, uh, around flipping lines around and stuff so that's all working real good uh, in here for the hydraulics all I got is a little switch so that thing energizes a coil when I hit it and flips the hydraulics from out there back to normal to the side swing on the boom and that's all controlled on the pedal here um, out of the whole project I think the only thing that I uh, I want to change on this yet the only thing I'm gonna do is other than chopping down those arms on the grating beam a little bit is I'm gonna add a little bit of flow restriction in the twist wrist probably just uh, uh, I don't know right in the hose at the connector or something like that uh, just to slow it down so when you're at idle, uh, you've got really nice control with the pedal on uh, on fine control for the grating beam, uh, for this uh, twist wrist, I should say, for, for tilting it. However, in real life, you're never running at idle when you're working. So it's a little bit more touchy than I'd like. You make it work. You just end up kind of tapping or bumping the pedal to get it to the, to the angle that you want. But it makes it difficult for fine control, like uh, say if you were trying to change the angle as you were grading. Um, so a little bit of uh, a little bit of flow control there, I think will do the trick. Uh, pressures worked out real good for the um, uh, relief valve. Uh, everything works perfectly for that. I might even bump it down a little bit, and it's pretty low already, but I still got tons of grip with it. So that's it for that project. That's all wrapped up. The next thing I'm working on right now is a new bucket, uh, building a grading bucket. Uh, so this one here is uh, 21 inches wide. That's the, the one that came with the machine. I got a little 12 inch uh, trenching bucket. Not so little. It's actually kind of huge. It's a heavy duty bucket. Um, so that gives me 12 inches. The machine's about five feet wide. My grading beam is about five feet wide. And uh, the grading bucket that I'm building is going to be, I think, 40 inches inside, like 42 to the outside of the the, the cutting edge on the front there. And uh, that'll kind of expand the capabilities on this thing here too and allow me to actually bale some material and grade some material. So that'll be real nice. Uh, the five feet wide is great, but it's... Um, it's uh, good for open surfaces or op open areas getting in tight to things like foundations and that it's not uh, not the greatest uh, and the narrower bucket will be a little bit better for that but still able to move some material and grade a fairly wide swath so that's the project I'm working on this week I gotta have it done by the end of this week so that uh, I've got it for this next job and maybe out there I'll get a little bit of video of everything in action for you Thanks for following along on the project. We'll catch you later.